Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. My name is Derek Salmon from Badgerland Birding and I'm also a graduate student at Nichols State University in the Marine and Environmental Biology program. And I wanted to give you my personal account of dealing with Hurricane Ida. For the grad students, the news popped up really quickly on August 26th. Um, we have a group chat and somebody posted and they're saying, oh yeah, it's like the first uh, major, possibly major hurricane of the season. It's not anything yet, but it could turn into something. So I started filming the storm prep stuff um, just in case I wanted to, to make something from the video. So we have these bottles filled with water. I have water in these. And then uh, I also got some frozen water bottles in case um, we lose power. You can kind of put that in the fridge and keep stuff cold. And so a lot of the grad students were saying, yeah, we're going to Alabama or Florida or somewhere else. At this point, I was like, it's supposed to be a category three. I'm not really that worried about it. And so then we were like, let's check the map in the morning because we should have Saturday to leave if we need to. From surge warnings, you need to be in your safe place by tomorrow night. 140 miles an hour, plus or minus, in terms of the max winds, that's cat four. I would not want to take a chance with this, I would not want to put my chips in the, well, maybe it won't turn out to be so bad. Uh, that's not what this looks like. Yeah, that's a dangerous gamble right there. And now the path is supposed to go right through Thibodeau. Like, that's right where we are. We're going to go to Texas. My roommate has family there. And just kind of chill for a few days. We should be well out of the range there. My girlfriend, Claire, her family decided to stay back. And some of our neighbors stayed because we have a pretty sturdy brick apartment complex. We're in Brownsboro, Texas now. It was supposed to be like a six and a half hour drive turned into like an eight hour drive because of all the traffic and we weren't even driving the worst trafficked areas. Over the river bridge where we had constant traffic today and we we're gonna have tornado like conditions. So overnight it actually strengthened. Um, they're talking like 155 mile an hour winds which is close to category five. And I decided I would call Claire about every two hours just to check in and see. So it's pretty much the same as it's been? Well, it got like a little, a little bit more intense. Like I went out about um, 10 o'clock maybe, and it was just like misting outside. Mm -hmm. And like a little, uh, a little wind. And they showed Grand Isle and it looked like it was just getting hit real bad. Yeah, they're talking about Grand Isle being split into two islands because of how much water is going to come. Yeah. But I we mean, were, I feel we, bad for the box turtles. Like, we just did all those box turtle I surveys, know. and I'm like, they, those are probably some of the most vulnerable critters. I know. So one of the saddest parts of the story was Grand Isle. Um, and Grand Isle is Louisiana's only barrier island that's accessible by car. There's a long bridge that you take to go to Grand Isle. They said 100% of the buildings there were affected and many of them aren't going to be able to be restored. It's such a unique, fragile area. I did an episode there um, for the birding show about uh, spring migration birding, and there were a ton of awesome species, and there's this really unique forest called the uh, Chenier Forest. And so I'm curious about how much of that is left and how it's going to affect migration and everything. But we ended up being lucky a little bit because it shifted further east, oh, like good. slightly. We were wondering and, if it did. And then, like, Thibodeau is still going to be pretty close to the eye, but we're going to be on the west side um, instead of the east because the east has more, like, the east side has more, have a higher chance of tornadoes. Okay. Because it's like, that's the worst side of it. A strong winds. It's going to be coming through southeast Louisiana. And then tonight, we are still seeing very strong winds. 100,000 customers are without power right now in southeast Louisiana. We are losing power every few minutes or so, but very briefly, the wind is starting to pick up. It's probably, I think it's around 35 miles an hour for us right now. Probably 95% confident that we're going to lose power for a, a, a good while mm -hmm. because we haven't, like the center of the storm isn't to us yet. Yeah. So by the time we start getting like 50 mile per hour winds, yeah, we're not going to have power anymore.
I was talking with Claire a lot um, yesterday about the hurricane and stuff. They had a big tree fall in their backyard, and that was before the main winds even hit. And then I think, I know they lost some shingles on the roof. They had a branch hit their house, um, but I think they're all safe. We called our neighbor who lives in our apartment complex, and uh, she said, I'm glad you guys left. It looks like a war zone out here. <laughs> Just amazing uh, sound of that wind. As we have land falling tropical cyclones, typically, in this case, to the right and to the north, uh, we see that tornado threat. And tweets from the power company saying catastrophic damage. What are your major concerns right now? Uh, how long are we going to be without power? We still don't know anything about school. It just said it's closed until further notice. So we got the news that it might be a a while before we actually go back. Been watching these numbers over the past couple of days climb in some instances, oh, awesome. and still over a million people so without power. The internet yeah, includes yeah, yeah, Baton yeah. Rouge, New Orleans, the Gulfport, Mississippi yeah, as well, and the threshold. Yeah. From our judging from what our neighbors said, our apartment's still standing, so that's good. One of the other grad students, part of their roof came off, and so there's a bunch of water inside. And it just sounds like a mess. As far as the birds go. Apparently the storm pushed up a bunch of cool stuff like sooty turns and bridal turns So like the LSU bird watchers were out and saw a bunch of awesome stuff. So I'm kind of jealous I didn't get to see that but I um, mean you know, I'd rather be safe than to have stayed in Thibodeau and You know had like the roof come off or something while we're there We stayed in Texas for about a week and then my roommate ended up going to Nebraska to visit some family and I wanted to go back to Thibodeau to visit Claire and check on my apartment. I feel kind of weird because like, you know, things are normal here in Texas. And so I'm going into an area where I know there's no power. There's like two hour lines for gas. They're only accepting cash for stuff. So my main worry was gasoline and uh, having enough and not running out somewhere. I'm driving down. I was able to get gas twice. Um, so now I'm going to um, head into actually the not great area. As I got into Thibodeau, uh, the destruction really started to show itself. There were tons of power lines down, pieces of houses, pieces of roof ripped off houses, um, areas of houses that had collapsed in, uh, huge trees down. None of the uh, stoplights were working, so everything turned into a four-way stop. I stopped at my apartment first and uh, checked it out. One of our shutters came off here. So I'm just seeing now, but we're gonna walk into my apartment for the first time. It smells bad, I can already smell the refrigerator. Yeah, it definitely smells kinda rank in here though. Oh yes, this room smells really good. This all looks good. Overall, I'm really pleased with how this held up though. But I bet everything in here is just rank. Yep. And in here. Yep. Real shame. Um, I'm gonna get this place cleaned up a little bit. That fridge was absolutely disgusting and the smell is still in the apartment. It feels like fall. It's uh, I mean, I guess it is fall, but I feel like all the leaves fell down and now they're, they're kind of decomposing. It gives that small fall smell probably a little bit early. So i um, really happy with how the apartment held up, but Thibodeau is in rough shape. And uh, it's a really kind of eerie feeling because like everyone's just kind of working on stuff and and it's, you know, more or less a ghost town except for the people doing the work. So after checking up on my apartment, I went to Claire's house. They had one generator that was running uh, a, like a light in the kitchen and then they were able to get the TV on and it was powering a couple other things but no air conditioning so it's super hot and humid everywhere yeah, I remember one of the first things when I pulled in the driveway there was this tree down on the side and a couple Inca doves and a morning dove 
flew out from the bushes and landed in these down trees. And I was like, oh, well, at least the birds are using these trees to their advantage. I don't know if they even knew what was going on. Uh, it's probably just back to business as usual for them. So Claire gave me a tour of the yard. Maybe see how like, it just kind yeah. of came up there like might that. be water in the hole too. Even like the ground. Oh, buddy. And like that's someone's shutter, like that does not belong to our house. I don't know where that came from. I don't even know how you fix this besides just draining the pool and like sweeping it. Cause Man. I tore this one. Yeah. This is this, this um, is such a beautiful tree too. Like this is just insane. Wow. Yeah, I was For that to get this. pushed over. Like that's a serious yeah. thing. And part of me also wants to just like go in the water, but I don't know how much mud. I don't know how deep it is. <laughs> Wow. The horse went okay. Yeah. <laughs> like this thing is huge. Yeah. So there's a blue jay using this tree that fell. So even though it's not living anymore, it's still being used by critters. Well, it looks like the birds are definitely still here and they're kind of hanging out in the destroyed trees and just flying around. We actually just heard a kingfisher twice fly through, which was kind of unique. Um, mostly it's been blue jays, great egrets, morning doves, a couple of Inca doves, and then starlings and house sparrows. But it's nice to see that the birds are still here and using the resources, even if they're a little bit different than they were before. And that's a starling. I think it's the same one. Oops. No, there's two. Oh yeah, there are two. So I guess the update with people is that gas lines here are incredibly long. Somebody apparently got shot in Jefferson Parish over a gasoline dispute, which is ridiculous. Um, there is no power for this parish. Lafouche, it's expected to be back on the 22nd, and it's, I believe it's the 4th today or their fit. So that's like, you know, a solid amount of time that people are expected to survive without power. So just a different quality of life right now for everybody. And then I decided to stay a second day. So I stayed at uh, their house there uh, with no AC, which is always fun. <laughs> it's just a super hot, humid sleep. Um, so the following day, they were able to get their hands on another generator, which was great because those things are in super high demand. But we got that working for the apartment. They were able to get AC. And after not having AC, <laughs> like they had been dealing with that for at least a week. And then to finally have it, it just felt so amazing. I headed back up to Wisconsin then, and my main worry was getting gas. I'm going to leave for Wisconsin tomorrow. But uh, it's tough because there's a curfew because all the traffic lights are out. And so I have to leave at 6 when the curfew ends because normally I'd leave earlier because it's like a 15 hour drive. I was kind of in the middle, what felt like the middle of nowhere and there was this small town that had a gas pump that was open. And uh, I didn't have to wait at all, I just got gas and that was really like anxiety relieving for me. Getting gas. Um, found some at a little small town kind of on the way up so really great discovery. So I was like cool, I'm going to make it out of this area and I'm going to be on my way and the drive should be more normal. So I got back to Wisconsin really late that night. Um, I've been in touch with people down there. Uh, power is not expected to be restored until the end of the month in Lafouche Parish, which is where Thibodeau is. That's a really long time for people to be without power and to just have to survive. Even if you have like hurricane supplies built up, that's a ridiculously long amount of time. Apparently there's been fish kills from Ida. There's been um, oiled birds. It's just a lot of devastation. So uh, that's kind of my experience with it. Louisiana can definitely use your support, uh, prayers, donations, assistance, all of that stuff. So thanks so much for watching this video. That fridge was absolutely disgusting and the smell is still in the apartment. I had uh, some frozen bananas that I you know, didn't really remember were in there and those thawed out and just like got disgusting. I was going to make banana bread and I just kept accumulating them and I never did. Um, I flipped the tables back over. Uh, there's one of these on the ground, so that's probably not good. <laughs>